So far, I have defined three asymptotic notations, the big O, big omega, and theta. And I defined all three of them in terms of two constants, you know, the F and, and, and the, the big O and the big omega, I defined them in terms of constants C and K. For the theta, I defined it in terms of constants C1, C2, and K. There is another way of defining all these three notations using the limits, limits of functions, okay, where the functions where we can actually define the limit on these functions. And these, these definitions are not different definitions or do not de define different concepts. They are equivalent definitions, okay? So you can basically define big O using the notion of there exist constant C and K, or you can talk about it in terms of the limit, okay? And now in this video, I'm gonna talk about these definitions using the limit. And also, once now I introduce the, the definition using the limit, I will introduce two new notations or asymptotic uh, notations here that we call them little o and little omega, okay? So the big O using the, the limit is that we say that if and G, if is a big O of G, if and only if the limit of F over G is some finite number as X goes to infinity, it is some finite number. So what is this saying here? If F is O of G, remember in terms of constant, we are saying that F is bounded from above by a function G. So that G has to, to have either equal order of growth or larger order of growth. So now if you take F divided by G, this is a number that should be small. In, so in some sense, it should be, it cannot be infinite because if it's infinite, we are saying that F is much larger than G in terms of its order of growth. So if you take, for example, if we take F of, let's again go, F of X is X and F and G of X, is x squared. And if you look at the limit as x goes to infinity of f of x divided by g of x, you'll find that this is the limit of x divided by x squared as x goes to infinity, which is the limit of 1 over x as x goes to infinity, and this is 0. And 0, of course, is a finite number. Okay, this notation here, smaller than infinity, means that it's a finite number. And this finite number in the case of big O, it could be import, it could be zero, but it doesn't have to be zero because for example, if I look at f of x being three x cubed and g of x uh, nine x cubed, then the limit of f of x divided by g of x as x goes to infinity is of course the limit of 3x cubed, 9x cubed, which is one third, right? So the limit of 3 ninths is 3 ninths itself, which is one third. So this one third is, the, is, is a finite number. It's not zero. And this is correct, right? I mean, f and f is O of G, and also G is O of F. So I can, the limit of G divided by F would be three in this case. Okay, so if you look at f divided by g and you take the limit of this resulting function, if the limit is, is finite, then f is O of g. And it's also the other way around. If, if f is O of g based on your definition of constant c and k, then for sure the limit of f divided by g, if the limits are defined, it, is, it has to be finite, okay? Now, you should immediately imagine what would happen when we talk about big omega if f divided by g is finite for, for finite and could be zero, could be zero in this case. What happens when we talk about f is omega of g? If f is omega of g, then the limit of f divided by g cannot be zero now, okay? So if I look at now, for example, if Again, going back to our example, if 9x and g of x is 3x, and I take the limit of f of x divided by g of x, again, it's always as x goes to infinity, this is the limit of 9 divided by 3 and equals 3, okay? It is greater than 0, and it is, it is the 
it is big omega, right? F is big omega of G. Let's look at functions where the F is not omega of G. So if F, F of X is, if X is X and if G of X is X squared. Now, if you look at the limit, then you are looking at the limit of x over x squared, which is 1 over x. Oh, sorry, I should not, so that not to confuse students here. This is the limit of 1 over x as x goes to infinity, and this is 0. The limit of 1 over x is 0. 0 is not greater than 0. Therefore, f of x is not omega of g of x in this case, right? So take f of x divided by g of x. If the limit of that is uh, is greater than zero, it could be infinity, but it uh, but it uh, but it cannot be zero. Then f is is uh, omega of of g. Okay. Big theta. Again, here when we look at at the function being on the same order of g, on the same order bounded from above and below by g, then if I take f divided by g, if I take f divided by g, then what I get is is a function whose limit is a constant. Okay, whose limit is a constant, and this should make sense. For example, if I take if I take let's say f of x, sorry, f of x is let's say x squared plus one, and I take g of x to be x squared, then I'm asking, now, if you look at it from uh, from constants perspective, c1, c2, and k, you should be able to prove that f of x is theta of g of x. But what about the limit? What, what happens if I take the limit of x squared plus one divided by x squared as x goes to infinity? Well, if I'm dealing with uh, with uh, numbers that are greater than k, and k is greater than zero, I can now say that this is, if I divide the numerator and denominator by x squared, I get one plus one x squared divided by one here, which is the limit of one plus one over x squared as x goes to infinity. And as x goes to infinity, this term goes to zero and one goes to one. So this is one here. Okay, so this is, it's the, the ratio of f and g, the limit of that function is a, is, is a constant that is finite. Okay, it is greater than zero. It has to be strictly greater than zero and has to be finite. Okay? So this is how we define, how we define the, the theta as well in terms of, of uh, these limits. So now if you look at the three, three notations we have seen so far, big O is less than or equal, okay? So if I look at them here, so the big O is, this is basically a symptotic notation for less than or equal. The omega is for the asymptotic notation for greater than or equal. And the theta is the asymptotic notation for equality. But we have two other operators that we can use to compare, which is the less than, or less than, but not or equal, less than, strictly less than, and there is the greater than. Is there a notation for them? The answer is yes. For the less than, strictly less than, we have the little o, and for the strictly greater than, we have the little omega, okay? And little o, asymptotic, asymptotic less than or equal, we say that f is little o of g, f is little o of g if the limit of fx divided by g of x is strictly zero. It is strictly zero. It is not, it is not a, a, a finite value. It's not a finite, any finite value. It has to be zero. Okay, so if I take f of x, for example, to be x and g of x, g of x is x squared, you will notice that li the limit of f of x and g of x is zero in this case. And it is true that x is little o of x, x squared. It is really, x is really smaller than x squared for, again, once we go beyond value k. But if you look, for example, if you look at f of x is 2x and g of x is, let's say, 3x, notice that f of, uh, f of x is big o 
of g of x. We know that. Because we can say that f of x is asymptotically less than or equal to g of x. But is f of x little o of g of x? So we need to look at the limit as x goes to infinity of 2x divided by 3x. Okay, here we don't need this 3x. And this limit here is 2 thirds, right? 2 thirds, is, it is finite, but it is not equal to 0. We need it to be equal to 0. So it's not equal to 0. Therefore, f of x is not little o of g of x. Okay, so here you want it to be strictly smaller than, and the last, the last notation here is the little omega, where we say that f is little omega of g, if you take the function f divided by g and the limit of that is infinity. And again, you can easily see examples that if I take f of x to be, again, you know, 7x squared and take g of x, you know, 2x squared, of course, f of x is omega of g of x, big omega of g of x. But if I look at the limit of 7x squared divided by 2x squared, as x goes to infinity, this is 7 over 2, or 3.5. This is not in equal to infinity. This is a finite number. Therefore, f of x is not little omega of g of x. Okay. So it's very important to keep in mind this the, these notations, the less than or equal, greater than or equal, strictly less than, strictly greater than, and equality, because this is how you should keep them in mind, okay? So 7x squared is less than or equal to 500x squared. We can use big O. It is not strictly less than it. We cannot use little o, okay? So we have the big O for asymptotic greater than, less than or equal. We have big omega for asymptotic less than or equal, greater than or equal, sorry. Let me actually write them here so that we have big O, which for, for less than or equal. We have big omega for greater than or equal. We have theta asymptotically equal. We have little o for less than. And we have little omega for strictly greater than. Okay. Any of these can be used to talk about bounding functions from above with big O, from below with, with omega, and in terms of equality or equivalence in terms of theta. As I said, we can use for big O, omega, and theta, we can use this definition based on constants, finding the constants to prove your result. But also for all five of them, we can use these five definitions based on the limit of f divided by g. And look, you take f divided by g and, if, and, and, uh, and look at its value if it's finite or infinite, and so on, if it can be zero or it's greater than zero, and determine which one of these it is. Now, with that, I wanna say just a few, a few helpful results or state a few helpful results or properties of limits that you would be using here. I mean, of course, it is assumed that students who have taken calculus know these ones, but it's worth reminding because these will be results that we would use in, in analysis of algorithms we encounter. So for example, if you give me a constant function, f of x equals c, if you give me f of x equals c, the limit of that function, limit of c as x goes to infinity, is of course c, okay? So this is important to keep in mind here. It's a very simple result that the limit of a constant function is that constant, okay? c is a constant here, it's not a variable. We have the limit of, of x as x goes to infinity, this is infinity, okay? It's an infinite one. And the other one that we will encounter is limit of 1 over x as x goes to infinity. This is, of course, 0. Okay? So these are very important here. Um, another important set of results is that when we look at, you know, function of functions, you know, summation of functions, uh, subtraction, division, multiplication, and so on. So imagine that I, I, I want to look at the limit of f of x plus g of x as x goes to infinity. And here in this case, let's assume that we don't have a case of 
of infinity minus infinity, like in the sense that let's as if I assume the limit of f, we don't have the limit of f being infinity and limit of g being minus infinity. If I assume this, okay, so if g is not the function, let's say minus x, okay, then this the 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 limit of this is the limit of f with x going to infinity plus the limit of g with x going to infinity. Okay. And similarly, similarly to those, we can define that the limit of c, if I have a constant time, or let me actually use d here to distinguish from other constant, this would be d times the limit of f of x with x going to infinity, again, as long as I don't have here to be multiplying, let's say, 0 by infinity or anything like that. And you can use, for subtraction, the limit of f minus g is the limit of f minus the limit of g. Once again, as long as I'm not dealing with infinity minus infinity. And, and the same thing. One important result, one very powerful result is L'Hopital's rule. And again, this should be something taught in any introductory calculus course. So what does L'Hopital's rule tell us? This is when we, when we are trying, in our definitions, we are always dealing with the limit of f of x divided by g of x as x goes to infinity, right? All of our five definitions of big O, big omega, theta, little o, little omega, all of them defi are de based, defined based on this. L'Hopital's rule tells us that if If we have the limit, if we have the limit of f of x equals the limit of g of x equals zero as x goes to infinity in these cases, or the limit of f of x equals the limit of g of x equals infinity as x goes to infinity again, if you are looking at the limit of f of x divided by g of x, and you have this property that both the limit of both f of x and g of x go to zero, or both limits go to infinity, and you can, of course, take the derivatives of these functions, then you can also do, this would be equal to the limit of the derivative of f divided by the derivative of g as x goes to infinity. We need to be f, f and g are both, the derivatives of them are defined, have defined derivatives, derivatives, and of course we want the g prime of x to be not zero for every x, right? So L'Hopital's rule is very powerful if you are taking the ratio of two functions f, f and g, and the limit of each of them individually is zero, we have a problem, we cannot divide zero by zero. If the limit of each of them is infinity, we have a problem, what's the infinity divided by infinity? L'Hopital's rule tells us that in both of these cases, I can take the derivatives of this function and look at the limit of the ratio of these de derivatives, as long as the derivatives are defined and g prime of x is not zero, because I cannot define by, divide by zero. Okay, so this is a very important rule also to keep in mind if you, uh, you end up using the, the definitions of these asymptotic notations based on the limits.